It is for it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves. It's not, it's not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving. It's a gift of God. Last week somebody was talking to me and, and they had uh, an opportunity to talk with some people after the service. And this one person asked them after they heard the message, so what do I need to do with everything that Pastor Paul said? How do I, how do I get it? How do I receive it? Well, you just believe it and accept it. You don't work for it. You don't work for salvation. You don't earn salvation. It's a gift. How many of you like Christmas? How many of you like gifts? Oh, come on. Some of you are going, no, I, I would rather give than receive because, you know, it's more, please be real. Come on. You like to receive? How many of you like receiving? How many receiving's fun? Yeah. Now, how many of you know that during Christmas you don't have to work for those gifts? People give you, now of course, how many of you it happens, somebody gives you a gift and you weren't planning on giving them a gift, but since they gave you one, now you feel obligated, now you've got to go buy them one. You're going, you know, I really wasn't going to give them a gift, but now they gave me one, so. <sighs> but when a gift comes, what do you do? You, you didn't work for it. You didn't earn it. Someone gave it to you. And so what do you do? You, you receive it. It's pretty easy. Someone gives you. Is that work? Is it hard to receive? No, I mean, if, if it's hard for you to receive gifts, there's a lot of other volunteers that will take yours. This is what I want you to see here. And this salvation is not of yourselves. It's not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. I just can't seem to get away from, from the simplicity of this. Some people say, you, you make it sound so easy to get saved. Mm, it is. No, 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 Pastor, you, you, you cannot get saved until you change. No, 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 you can't change until you get saved. <laughs> Got it backwards. No, 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 no. You don't earn it. You don't, you, it's like Jesus coming to, the, to your house and knocking on the door. And you look out the window and go, oh, no, 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 let me clean it up first. Let me clean it up first, and then I'll let you in. And you've been trying to clean for the last 10 years, and he's still out there knocking, trying to get, no, 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 Lord, let me clean it up. Let me clean it up. Let me clean it up. He's going, you, you can't. Let me in. I'll clean it up. Let me in. I came here to clean it up. And so we keep working and sweating and we never feel quite good enough. You never will. You never will feel, feel quite. See, religion will make you feel guilty. And Jesus didn't come to make you feel guilty. You know, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to point out your faults. I know you have faults. I know your life is a mess. Listen, all of our lives are a mess. Some of you are a bigger mess. Some of you are a small mess. Some of you are an obvious mess. Not so obvious mess. Some of you are a good smelling mess. Some of you are a stinky mess. But a mess is a mess. And we all need. We all need Jesus. The worst kind of sin is those who think they don't need him. I think self-righteousness is one of the worst. I'm so good, I don't need grace. Wow. You are so blind, you have no idea how in desperate need you are of the grace of God. You can't fix yourself. You can't save yourself. And, and I guess I, I seem to be stuck here in this verse because this is where I find a lot of Christians. We receive the grace of God to save us, but then we leave grace at salvation and we are killing ourselves for the rest of our life trying to fix ourselves and change ourselves. If grace could save me, it can change me. It can fix me. It can rearrange me. It can strengthen me. It can provide for me. It can make me who God wants me to be. Now, if grace comes in and, and removes my past, and makes me more aware 
of the sacrifice, makes me more aware of the blood of Jesus, makes me more aware of how much he loved me, that I could be born again, that I could receive this new life. If grace could do that for me, then why, as I, why not as I continue in my Christian walk, can the grace of God not also make me more aware of his strength than my weakness? And too many times, because of faults and failures or chronic patterns or habits that we don't seem to break, we, we're going to work harder and we're going to give more effort, but we always seem to be aware of our weaknesses and our faults and our disappointments, and we get down on ourselves, and then the enemy comes in with condemnation. But if your salvation began with grace, whatever you start with, stay with it. If grace can save you, grace can fix you. Grace can change you. The grace and the strength. Of, we need to be more aware of his strength in our life than our weaknesses. The grace of God can begin to work through you and flow through you in such a way that you almost step aside and go, this is so cool. I don't have the ability to do this, but God says, no, but you've given me place to work in your life. Let me show you what I can do through you if you just give me place. And you don't brag about who you are because you know that in and of yourself it is impossible to do certain things. But God's grace is more than enough. He gives you an ability that is so far beyond who you are in the natural. And when other people want to limit you or, or, or put you in a box, God takes you out of a box and says, no, 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 we can do far more than this. You are bigger than you've ever dreamed of. Verse 10, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand. God's own handiwork, workmanship, export quality. You are the best. God does not make junk. Everything that he makes is good looking. Amen. There are no ugly people in here today. Everybody's good looking. Everybody is export quality. You are not going to be left over and sold in a garage sale. You are high-class handiwork. God does not make junk. And you cannot allow the world, your family, or friends who judge you according to the flesh to limit you because of what they see. They don't see what God wants to do on the inside of you. They don't see the purpose that he created you for. They have no idea of the intentions that he has for your life. We are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. In other words, He has already arranged things for you. Taking paths which He prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life. Everybody say good life. How many of you want a good life? Anybody want a bad life? If you want a bad life, you're in the wrong church. This is good life and new life. Not bad life and old life. Amen? Taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. That means it's already there. So how much work do you have to do if something is prearranged? How much work do you have to do if he has predestined and planned beforehand, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time? In other words, everything you need, it's taken care of. The Bible says he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So how much work should it be for us to be blessed, Healthy, full of joy, and walking in peace. Who we are is because God has done a work in us. He is doing a work in us. And what he has begun, he will complete. Every one of us is a work in progress. I encourage you, faith in the grace of God with a humble heart opens the door for his ability, his strength, and his favor to bring to pass his will in your life. God bless you. We'll see you again next week. Here, new life.